Uh, I'm wondering how many of you thought I was talking about mutation testing. Uh, if that's you, sorry. Um, so we're going to talk about metamorphic testing in the context of other testing kind of methodologies. So uh, this is kind of what the flow of a basic test looks like. You have some known input that you supplied. Uh, you run it through some computation. That's the code that's under test. Uh, you compute the output, and you compare that to the expected output. From there, you say, yay, it worked, or boo, it didn't work, OK? So um, <coughs> this is simple. It's easy to write, but it has some downsides. Uh, you have to already know the answer ahead of time. Uh, you're doing a lot of stuff manually. You're directly comparing these two values. Uh, you have to decide which inputs to provide, and for a lot of kind of similar tests, you end up with duplicated code. So uh, property-based testing, uh, this lets the computer do some of the heavy lifting for you. Uh, here, you generate inputs, filter those down to ones that you actually care about, uh, and then you basically do the same process. You compute an output, and then you make kind of general statements about the properties of this output or the code under test. Um, so. Uh, I use this frequently, but it also has some downsides. Uh, well, first, you get better coverage because you're generating lots of inputs, and you're repeating this process, like it says up there, like a 1,000 times per test. Uh, the downside is that since you don't know exactly what the input is because they're randomly generated, you can't say a whole lot, or you can't be super specific about what that output is. So you can't say, you can't test very specific properties. So. At this point, uh, Hillel Wayne writes this blog post about metamorphic testing. Uh, Hillel Wayne uh, is someone who talks about formal methods a lot uh, and various other things kind of in the Python world. So I saw this, said, that's interesting. I, it also doesn't look that hard to do. So I started working on kind of getting this working in Rust. As an aside, I met him in Chicago, and we talked about this also via Puppet, uh, and he gave me chocolate, which was homemade, which was delicious. Right? OK, uh, so metamorphic testing, the way this works is that you start out with an input that you provide. Uh, you also supply a set of transformations that are going to monkey with that input. Uh, from there, you're going to compute every possible combination of those transformations, apply that to your input, so you get a new input for every possible combination of those transformations. Uh, you compute an output for the original input and every transformed input. And you uh, enforce that some relation holds between those outputs. So as an example, or sorry, key features, you get 2 to the n minus 1 test cases for n transformations. That's nice. More if the order of the transformations doesn't matter. Uh, you know exactly what the input is, so you can say specific stuff about it. Uh, and you don't need to know the outputs ahead of time. That uh, kind of eases the burden on the developer. So uh, when does this make sense? Well, what if coming up with the expected output is difficult, time-consuming, expensive, yada, yada, yada? Um, <clears throat> or maybe the uh, available properties to test are very difficult or uh, too general to be useful. So uh, example, let's say that your name is Gene, and you do embroidery. So you want to provide a service where you, somebody uploads a photo of embroidery, and you give them back a sequence of instructions to reproduce it. What properties are you going to test? I have no idea. Who's going to sit down and transcribe those expected outputs? Nobody. So uh, what about a search API? So you provide, say, uh, like a, a request as your input. Uh, and you want to return search results. Uh, transformations, you could change the pagination, change sort order, stuff like that, and assert that you still get the same total number of search results back. So I wrote something in Rust that I call Monarch, which does this. Um, <coughs> and there's really not a whole lot going on here. You just provide a couple of closures for your relation, transformations, yada, yada, yada. Like I said, not a whole lot going on here. You just have a couple closures. That's all I got. Cool. 